Islands represent all my island people say We people start originally from my homeland Like my old man say there's nothing impossible So we have to bring this message to my brother Lyrical straight from the crew Out to the blue We represent the voices of my ancestors calling And I was getting more sick Day five. Is it day five? I don't know how many days we've been diving. Maybe longer than that. And yesterday, we kind of explored these areas. Delos is anchored here. But what we really want to do is get out here to Little Tobago and check out some of these places along here. Uh, it's a little bit long to go in the dinghy. So I think what we'll actually do is pick the anchor up on Delos and we'll just take the whole boat around and maybe through here and uh, See what looks good. Cool. Yeah, sound good? Sounds good to me. Let's do it. You excited for Little Tobago? I'm so excited. Woohoo! When you're like picking out a dive spot, do you have kind of like a mini checklist in your mind of things you're considering? When yeah, you're looking at a spot. I like uh, drift dives, so I'm looking for like cool bottom contours that will lead current around an island or steep drop offs. So when I look at the chart, it's 52 meters, and then right here, these lines get really close together. So you have quite a big change in depth in a small area, which means there's a, a steeper drop off there, which is always kind of cool. There's always a lot of uh, fish life and the bottom contour changes like stuff for coral to grow on instead of just a big flat sandy area. Um, but also I think what's really important is currents because whenever there's any movement in water and currents it brings nutrients in and fish love swim around in currents and eat. So anytime that there's water moving around there's going to be some kind of life. So if you have currents and you have steep drop offs, I think that's a win for diving. And this is exactly what we were looking for today. So we just pulled up uh, next to Little Tobago and because it's like a protected reef area, we're not going to anchor but we're just going to um, kind of hover around with Delos and we're going to dive in teams. This is a site called Blackjack Hole and the dive site is actually quite long but I think it's made for divers that are going to be taken with like a dive master that don't have five cameras with them. <laughs> we go pretty slow. We'll start the dive somewhere over here in like between 60 and 30 feet. First team is getting suited up as we speak. It's always a uh, slightly hectic dive off Delos. I mean, if we didn't have like so many cameras and like the masks and so many different batteries and lights and setups and all this stuff, it'd be a lot easier. Um, but everyone always goes in with like a full on kit. So getting them like ready, like off the back, timed with when the boat is like facing the swells the right direction and everything, it's, it's always an interesting procedure. Yeah, let's head down to uh, the 20 meter contour. We'll just follow that around. We just saw this surface marker pop up and they are so far away like the current has got to be ripping down there. So Blue went out in the dinghy a while ago um, and spotted them and I just zoomed in super far with this camera. 
and I could see at least one other person on the dinghy uh, with her. So they're getting picked up now and they're gonna come back and then me, Brady, and Blue are gonna get ready for our dive and hopefully we can get some good intel from these guys about what they saw and where the best parts of the dives were and hopefully we can have a great dive as well. Went a long way. Yeah, we looked over and we're like, is that them? Like, is that their float way right, out right. there? I think we should start you guys a lot further, like at the point or just past that point. Here. That's where it really starts to get nice anyway. Okay. Yeah, whenever you're ready, we're in 10 meters. Okay. So. Dive, dive, dive. Not a bad bounty for the day. Not a bad catch. Um, I love hunting lionfish. I find it to be, I don't really normally do spear fishing or fishing of any kind or hunting, but something about killing something that you know is invasive, it's not supposed to be here, something's okay about it to me. Lionfish are originally from the Indo-Pacific and the Red Sea. Over there, sharks, cornet fish, groupers, Large eels and other scorpion fish are known to eat them. But here in the Caribbean? These guys don't have any natural predators and because of that, uh, they just have rule of the reef and they go around and they eat all the juvenile babies of all of the uh, reef fish that are endemic that are supposed to be here. They have a ferocious appetite. A female lionfish produces two million eggs a year. The adults are mostly fish eaters and have very few predators outside their home range. 
Research has been done showing that a single lionfish can reduce marine creatures by 80 to 90 percent in its home range within five weeks. They've only been here in the Caribbean for since the 80s. They believe that somebody from an aquarium dumped a, a pair of lionfish and that's all it took for them to spread throughout the Caribbean. I read some different theories apart from the one Nate just said to why the lionfish spread in the first place. One being that a big hurricane destroyed aquariums, releasing the lionfish into the wild. Regardless, it's pretty safe to say that the whole invasion started in South Florida and have now spread through the whole Caribbean. The saying is, eat them to beat them. So, the diving community is calling on all divers to do their part to start hunting lionfish. Yeah. This guy pops up with a lionfish on a spear. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So lionfish is part of the scorpionfish family. So they are venomous, and what's venomous about them is these spines right up here. Okay, and what's gonna happen is your hand's gonna go numb, the body part's gonna go numb, you could get sick. Have so you been hit before? I have, I have. Not underwater, but while cleaning these, I have been hit, Ugh. and it is not a pleasant. Uh, my hand was numb for about eight hours, and then it just finally came back, so. We're gonna cut these guys' bellies open to see what kind of free fish we can find. Uh, I'm not a master at flaying fish by any means, but let's see what we find in here, okay? How'd that go? It went pretty good. Uh, I got as many as I could. There was a bunch of like these little ones that I just couldn't even really get to. But. So out of this lot, you know, we got a, I don't know, dozen plus of a reef fish. So that's why it's important. That's what they're doing. Devastating the reef by eating all the endemics. So eat them to bait them. I wanted to share this beautiful sunrise with everybody because it is gorgeous. I also wanted to mention for a moment about how awesome I think it's been to have Nate and Jordan be crewing with us. It's so interesting when you're on a boat how each person that's living on the boat with you dramatically changes like the energy and the vibe on the boat because it is such a small space and you are doing everything together. You know, you're working together, you're living together, you're traveling together. And um, yeah, I definitely think that they are are adding something really special and unique to Delos and their vigor for filming and kind of their fresh look on stuff. I think once you're on Delos for a while, the things that you feel inclined to film change um, just because things begin to feel more and more normal to you. Um, so having someone new aboard that's kind of filming and being like, what's this? What's this? What's that? Uh, I think it's cool. It's definitely like a fresh perspective. And um, I don't know, I just feel like the vibe is super, super good on board right now. And it's just a lot of creative juices flowing. And that's definitely my favorite like space to be in and, and my favorite type of people to be around. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to form new friendships with people <laughs> uh, under these conditions and I'm definitely in enjoying having them around for sure. Right, we've just arrived on Little Tobago Wildlife Sanctuary. It's a pretty quick dinghy ride. It's only three of us. We've all got our sun hats on. And we're gonna walk up the hill and see what we can find. Man, this place is cool. I had no idea that there'd be so many trails. And they're all like really well kept up and nice. 
There's no noise out here except for the birds and me. Oh, we've come up quite a ways. Wow. That's cool. You can see Delos way over there. So we just made it to this little outpost. Brian says there's bats in there, so we're gonna go check it out. Yeah, we're going in. You can definitely see them in there. What <laughs> crazy creatures, huh? They're so chill though. Oh shit, there they go. It's pretty baddie in here. Get in the shot. Oh shit. Get in the shot. Everyone's kind of spread out a little bit. Brian's doing like a time lapse video and just recording some audio. I'm not exactly sure where Nate is, but I think this is the first time in the two weeks since we've been on Delos that I've been by myself, which is pretty crazy. But it's really nice. Like, I never really thought of myself as like a bird person or like a birder. I know this is a really popular place for bird watchers come here, like they travel from all around the world to come to this place. And I wasn't sure if I ever really understood the appeal of birding, but man, it is just magical out here. just completely immersed in the sounds of the birds and little twigs breaking underneath your feet as you walk around and you can hear the ocean waves kind of crashing in the background on these rocks over there and this is a very very cool spot Okay, now you can really hear the birds are going nuts. I made a little call to one earlier, and there's one that was, every time I would call, it would call back to me and see if I can get it to go again. Ooh, that one's like, ooh, boop, 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 boop. Either that's Brian, or there's a bird that I'm really connecting with right now. This is so cool. You have this feeling that uh, we're the only people on the island, I think, is pretty safe to say. And it's just close. It's just across the bay. There's good trails and it's a very cool spot to chill and just explore, you know? What did you find, Brian? There's a chicken. We found the bird of paradise, Jordan. The chicken? Yeah. Chicken wants to come back in the dinghy with us. Stranded here with all these other crazy birds. We do one more crazy dive in Speyside and have a great overnight sail to Grenada. Good morning. Doesn't get much better than this. It's like you'd be on a thousand ways to die or something. Drop weights to your ankles and go down. Yeah. Try and drink beer underwater. First thing you're going to want to do is get rid of these spines because while you're cleaning it, you definitely don't want to get hit by these. So, sharp pair of scissors. Oh gosh. Need protective eyewear. 
I'll know that we have a vegetarian filming this, so he's not probably loving what I'm doing. <laughs> Ooh, bad. Uh, 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 bad. Uh, uh. Kirk's week was in very dirty conditions. Stop. And tell me, are there many other dolphin trainers from Jamaica? No, I'm only one. No. Yeah, born and bred, baby. <laughs> Repping Jamaica. Go get those dolphins. Business in the front, party in the back. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> like it? I like it a lot. <laughs>